Ah. Good morning, church. Hallelujah, he arose. Eh? Let's start again. Maybe you are still, I don't know, I even know what to say. Hallelujah, he arose. You know, that's the game changer. That is the game changer that he arose. That makes the difference. First, he was born by the Holy Spirit. That has never happened again and will never happen again. But you see, it was the beginning of a journey. Then he died. That was why he came. That was why he came. But then he arose. That changed the trajectory of our lives and destinies forever. Let's just lift our hands and give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. I want you to ask yourself this morning, am I thankful? You answer the question yourself. Am I thankful? Because, you know, we should never take it for granted that we're saved. The Bible says he called us. He chose us. He calls us the elect. We were chosen. We did nothing to merit this salvation. Just wave your hands to the Lord. For yourself, say, thank you, Lord, that you chose me. We celebrate the resurrection this morning. We don't have the human capacity to celebrate the resurrection the way we ought to. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. For the gift of our Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you. That you gave your all. You left your glory. You left your throne. And came just for us. We'll never know. How much it cost. To see our sin. Upon that cross, we'll never know how much it cost to see our sin. Upon that cross, we'll never know how much it cost to see a sin upon that cross. We'll never know. But Lord, we bless you this morning. We say thank you for the gift of Jesus. Our Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of you. Precious Holy Spirit, you raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's begin to pray in, pray in the Spirit. Just say, Father, visit everyone this morning. A special visitation. Not first for signs and wonders and miracles and our needs and all that. Give us a fresh revelation of Calvary. Give us a fresh revelation of the Easter Sunday morning. Give us a fresh revelation, every one of us, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Give us a fresh revelation. We pray this for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl joining this service. Both on site and online. We ask for every one of us, each of us, 
a visitation. Begin to pray in the spirit. That will give us a fresh revelation of Calvary and the resurrection. First is about our hearts. It's about the entirety of our beings yielded and sold out to the king. That's the most important thing. Our hearts one and one to our father. The relationship that we have. The fellowship that we have with him. That's the priority. That's the most important. Father, give me a fresh understanding. A fresh revelation. Let me come into the understanding like never before. The power of Calvary. The power of the cross. The beauty of resurrection. We ask in the name of Jesus, Father. Visit every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Visit every home represented here, both on-site and online. Oh, that we may draw closer to you. That we may go deeper with you. That you, must, you might draw us into you like never before. For your pleasure. For your glory. It's not about the miracles. It's not about the needs. It's not about the wonders. Oh, all that is part of it. It's part of it, but it's not the priority. The priority is the pleasure of our King. 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 Of our king. In our individual lives. In our ministering to Him. Fulfilling his agenda, fulfilling his purpose. It's never about us. The miracles, the wonders, the gifts, they are fringe benefits. They are not the essence. They are not the essence. The essence is the heart of our Father. Oh, that we give him pleasure. Oh, that we give him glory. Oh, that we are about his business. Father of fresh understanding of the cross a fresh revelation of Calvary a fresh understanding a fresh revelation of the resurrection morning oh for this house we receive a fresh outpouring of your spirit of your grace that we may walk like never before in the realities of the cross the realities of the resurrection Oh, that you may look down upon this house and find pleasure. And find pleasure. And find pleasure. You will look at us, a people about my business. A people about my heart. A people about my pleasure. You are our priority, Lord. 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 Your pleasure, your glory. Hey, Arabaka, Urukeria Bakasia Basa, Uria Bakisia Bakasa. We drop back from every destruction. We drop back from every destruction. We drop back from anything that displeases you. Hey, Araba. Hey, Araba. Hey, Araba. Hey, Araba. Horuo, wo, wo, wo. Mbasiakasa. Horiaba, sayabasa. Holy Spirit. Begin to invite the Holy Ghost to take his place in this service. Oh, we've asked for a special visitation. For every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every family, every home represented here. All those online will not be left out. Everyone on site will not be left out. A fresh visitation. A fresh visitation that will draw us closer. That will take us deeper. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Let's go to thank the Holy Ghost. He rests mightily upon our senior pastors. Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Tolu. He rests mightily upon them. There shall be a manifest manifestation 
of that visitation, of that resting upon them in this service in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. We turn the entirety of this service over to you. Every minute, every second, every part of it, every ministration, every item in the service is not by rote. It's not by rote. It's not a ritual. We ask for a fresh outpouring Holy Ghost upon every part of this service. Let it be an Easter Sunday we will never forget in our lives and destinies because Jehovah came down. Jehovah came down and visited each one of us in the name of Jesus, taking us to heights we could never imagine, taking us to depths our hearts cannot fathom. Hey, Arabasa, Oruwa Keria Bakasa, Eyereberia Kakuru Koi Koi, Eyarabaria Kasaya, Oria Bade De De De, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Rejiga commitment, Rejiga service, Rejiga hearts to you. Our God is our priority. Hey, Araba, Hoya Beria, Here Beria Casor Wo, Hey, ya, 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 Here Ya Baba, Horro Bobo Bobo. Drop every burden, drop every burden, drop every burden, drop every distraction, drop everything that's trying to take the place of your God in your heart. Oh, He sees, He knows, He sees, He knows, He knows your difficulty, He knows your needs. He knows the desperation of your situation. He knows the deadline. But don't be deceived. He sets the deadline. He sets the goalpost. He knows. He knows. He knows. But drop it now. Drop it now. And say, Father, I'm here for your pleasure. I'm here for your pleasure. You are my priority. Visit me. Visit me. Visit me. In this service, visit me. Visit me. Visit me in this service, not with the miracles, not with the wonders, not with the needs met. Oh, he's going to do that. But today, lift up your heart, lift up your life and say, Father, I'm here for you. You're my priority. Your pleasure is my priority. That you may look upon me and smile. That you may look upon me and find pleasure. All our needs, all our struggles. Everything, whatever the enemy is throwing against you, they are small. Where were anyone? Where were anyone? Where were anyone? They do not move near the majesty of a king. They cannot touch the majesty of a king. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hearts this morning and say, God, my father, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I celebrate the resurrection. I celebrate the resurrection. I'm here for you. Take me over. Take me over. Take my whole life. Take my whole life. I'm here for you. Hey, Arabas. Jesus. Jesus, my lover. Oh. Jesus, my lover. Oh. I just want to make you smile. I just want to make you proud of me. I just want to bless your heart. Jesus, 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 my lover. Oh. I want to make you smile. I want to bless your heart. Jesus, Jesus, my lover. Oh. I want to make you smile. I want to bless your heart, Jesus, Jesus, my lover, oh, I want to make you proud, I want to bless your heart, Jesus, Jesus, my lover, oh, my life goal, I want to make you smile. I want to make you proud, Jesus, Jesus, my lover, oh, I want to bless your heart, I want to make you smile, Jesus, Jesus.
Jesu, my lover, I want to make you smile. I want to make you proud. Jesu, Jesu, my lover, I want to bless your heart. I've got to make you smile. Savior is alive. He died and rose again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You heard me. My Savior is alive. He died and rose again. Hallelujah. For he's alive, he's alive, he's alive, I'm alive, hallelujah, hallelujah, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive, and I'm alive. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
live your decent life We died and rose again Hallelujah Hallelujah It's alive, it's alive It's alive, I'm alive Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. I say, no, he's alive. He died. He died. We shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. Our God in Him shall we trust. Surely He will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from every perilous pestilence. He will cover us with His feathers and under His wings shall we take refuge. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the Lord our refuge, even the Most High, our dwelling place, no evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come near our dwelling place. For he will give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. In their hands they shall bear us up, lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, upon the young lion and the serpent shall we trample under our feet. Because we have set our love upon him, therefore he will deliver us. He will set us up on high because we have known his name. We will call upon him and he will answer us. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us and honor us. With long life will he satisfy us and show us his salvation.
This morning on Fountain News, special Easter production holds today. Word Explosion Conference starts April 14th. Home Affairs and Bishop's Court holds online. Prayer meeting this Thursday. And Baby Dedication holds today towards the end of the service. Good morning, happy resurrection morning, and welcome to this episode of Fountain News. I'm Amarachi Ubrani. The day we have been waiting for is finally here. Talking about the special Easter production happening live this evening in this auditorium. So bring your family and friends for an awesome Easter experience in God's presence. There's nothing like it. Home Affairs, that's the Married Women's Fellowship of the Church, invites every married woman to its monthly 45-minute online prayer meeting coming up this Thursday, April 4th at 9 p.m. The Zoom meeting ID is 896-6863-1541 and the passcode is TFOLC. It promises to be a great time in God's presence, so invite every married woman you know. Also, the Bishop's Court, that's the Married Men's Fellowship of this church, will also be holding its online one-hour intercessory prayer meeting on Thursday. A time is 10 p.m. Zoom meeting ID is 814-8051-2395. Passcode is Bishop. And for the first time, Bishop's Court will also be using Google Meet in addition to Zoom for the prayer meeting. So check out the Google Meet link on your screen. It's Meet dot google dot com slash h j a dash i w m k dash r x s prayer points should be sent to 0803-383-1157 and if you're a married man this is a meeting you do not want to miss as it will be a great time in god's presence the Word Explosion Conference is here! Well, it starts on April 14th up until the 21st. A church will be holding its annual Word Explosion Conference. The theme is Science and Wonders. It will be eight days of explosive ministrations from renowned speakers like Bishop Michael Kunkwa, Bishop Tudor Bismack, Dr. Francis Miles, Pastor Mike Todd, Apostle Joshua Selman, Pastor Ibukwa Awushika, Pastor Kune Shurio, and our very own Pastor Jimmy Odukoya, and the Associate Senior Pastor Tolumani Odukoya. Trust me, you don't want to miss any of the days. Tell everyone you know and make it a duty to be here or to be online to participate. Hope Center will be holding her jumbo sales this Saturday, April 6th at 9 a.m. Venue is the Fountain Gardens. Items such as clothing, shoes, bags, and households will be sold at highly discounted prices. So invite as many people as you know will benefit from the discounted prices. The proceeds will be used to support the needy. So here are our most valuable March birthday celebrants. You'll find these and other interesting stories on church happenings, as well as tips, humor, and quiz. And the March edition of the Fountaineer newsletter, it will be in your mail shortly if you have indicated interest for it. You can also check the church app or visit the TFOLC website to read or download the newsletter that's for tomorrow. So we'd like to hear from you as well. If you have read the newsletter, do send your comments to publications at tfolc.org. God bless you as you do so. You may have noticed the children in church today. It's because it's Family Sunday. So no on-site or online children's church. Children who are in church, well, we, we, we can try to make them quiet, right? But they will still make a joyful noise, won't they? So parents and guardians help us by helping them to keep quiet so that we can all benefit from the service today. And because it's Family Sunday, there will also be baby dedication towards the end of the service. So if you're in church to dedicate your baby, please carry the baby yourself when the time comes to step out. Here are other announcements. Because of the Easter production holding today, there'll be no home fellowship this evening. Shower service continues online and on site this Thursday at 9 a.m. Thank you for watching this episode of Fountain News. Do enjoy the rest of the service.
okay. Happy Easter, church. You know, two things I noticed. <clears throat> We're a lot more quiet this morning. And forgive me, a little dress down for Easter. And I, I just couldn't help but notice. And I thought Christmas is a celebration because there's so much. But this is the real deal. And it just sort of seems I do not want us to lose the essence. So, Happy Easter, church. You know, if this sacrifice wasn't made, it wouldn't have mattered that Jesus came. Because then, we would not have been able to be partakers of the sacrifice that was made upon the cross. But he was born, fact. But he had to die and resurrect for us to get the value of restoration. So yes, this is the big deal. And can we stand up? I want us to act like we know it's a big deal. I want you to congratulate your neighbor. Congratulations for doing nothing to qualify to receive salvation. Just a gift of love. Just a gift of love that the Almighty God was willing to hold his heart and watch his son killed. And that Jesus was willing to die knowing he will rise again. And because he rose, you and I can face tomorrow. Happy Easter, church. So on behalf of the Fountain of Life Church, a large family of believers nurtured and raised in this house. I welcome you, the member of the family, and we welcome every new person that has joined us today. This is the Fountain of Life Church. No matter where you are around the world, no matter where you're watching us from, we're a global church raised to reach the ends of the earth. Every day, we're spreading the word as long as there's air to carry the message and technology continues to advance for our sake then the message will get to the ends of the earth and today we celebrate ourselves i want you to celebrate yourself i want you to lift up your hands to the lord and say thank you thank you for making me a fountaineer Thank you for bringing me to your house. Thank you for nurturing me in this house. Thank you for this family. I love every member of my family. And I hope you love yourselves too. So tell your neighbor, I love you. Because you are a member of my family. And this is us. Together. Thanking the Father for the gift of the Son, and for the sacrifice of the Son. So, we're going to sing our song, right? And we do not hold hands again. You know, sometimes I check myself because I'm the runaway pastor. Now you see me, now you don't. So I have to be sure that I'm doing the things I'm supposed to do. So shall we take our song? Okay, we don't hold hands, yes. <laughs>
He's alive. He's alive. Let's shout it out. He's alive. It's so beautiful that this is the month of mercy. And this whole experience is what gives us, what assures us of the mercy of God. His blood speaks and continues to speak greater and better than the blood of Abel. Hallelujah! We have a song that says, it's the blood medley. It's a blood medley, but the hymn will come first. <laughs> Hallelujah!
that's in the house this morning. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. The grave is empty. The grave is empty. The grave is empty. Jesus is alive. The excitement is enough for me. As Auntie Blessing said, you don't understand what it means for the grave to be empty. He died. But on the third day, Sunday, he walked out of that grave. Your father is alive. And because he's alive, because he lives, Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds our future. Hey, and life is worth a living just because Jesus lives. Turn to your neighbor and say, He's alive. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I don't know who needs reassurance this morning. Because Jesus lives, all fear is gone. There is no fear here because I know. Your future is secure and life is worth a living just because he lives. Your life is worth a living just. Jesus is alive. He's alive. My life is worth. sit in this reassurance there is no fear here we are confident why our God is alive our God is alive happy Easter please be seated happy Easter celebrate God this morning I'm sorry I'm a little I'm a little tired this morning because our senior pastor has kept us here for the last two nights preparing for the Easter production. Can we celebrate God? Can we celebrate the choir, the drama department, everyone, the instrumentalists? Let's celebrate our senior pastor. The man is gifted and called for a time such as this. We're excited and I want to invite you again today. We're having two shows today. One at 4 p.m., one at 7 p.m. Turn to anybody and say you are invited. You don't want to miss it. Happy Easter. Celebrate God this morning. We have an amazing promise from the Lord. John 15, 5. Can we read it all together? I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I'll read it in the TPT translation. I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source. I'll say that again. As you live in union with me as your source, I will say it again. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. And what jumped out to me here when I got to that line that says, as you live in union with me, 
you know, when a husband and a wife live in a house, they can be living in a house, but they might not be in union. Do I have a witness? You are in the same building, but you are not united. You are in the same room, but you are not united. What does it mean to be in union? It's a deliberate action that we live deliberately in him. Amen. That you live deliberately in him. Because without him, we are powerless. Sometimes life will make you think that you are your own source. That you have the understanding, the wisdom, the intellect. But it is God that gives. May we not forget who our source is. And may we be continually connected to that source. The Bible says, it is in him I live, I move, and I have my being. It is in him I live, I move, and I have my being. How are you living? How have you been living? How would you continue to live? I want to charge you this morning that you must understand that everything that you are and everything you will ever attain or be can never be found but within him. Even if you have reached a certain level in your life by yourself, I bet your potential is 10 times more than that. But you need to stay connected to him. And there's a caveat. Without him, you are powerless. Without him, you cannot live this life fully. He has come. He has died. The blood has been shed. The price has been paid. All that pertains to your life has been given to you. But you have to stay connected to get it. Turn to your neighbor and say, stay connected. Stay connected. It must be deliberate. There is nothing too big or too small for prayer. How many women here are praying for edges? You see, I realize I'm in the middle of my life. <laughs> and I pray for edges. There's nothing too small. Father, Lord, help your daughter. Increase my edges. Even in the little things, involve the father. In the big things, involve the father. In the things that you think he's not interested in, involve the father. That is why he is there. Make a deliberate act to always involve him. In your life, as a mother, as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a child of God, as a light. I always say that lights have different levels of brightness. Lights have different levels of brightness. It depends on how connected you are to the source as to how bright your light is going to shine. How connected are you? How bright are you shining today? Stay connected. Turn to your neighbor and say, stay connected. Can we just rise and ask the Lord that in this time, we will not be distracted by anything or anyone, that we will stay connected that every other voice that is speaking in this time will not distract us from understanding who God is and being connected to him for a time such as this. That we will begin to know him as our source and our helper in this time. That we will abide in him deliberately. That everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we are will come from being connected to him. That we'll understand that we cannot do anything without him. Tell him how much you need him. It is much. Ending. Some things have not aligned as you thought they would. Speak to your father. Tell him to help you. Tell him to tell you what to do. What to say. Where to go. Even in the little things. Involve your father. Thank him for coming. Because he has died. Life is worth a living. You cannot live in perpetual fear. That is not your life. That is not your future. You have a hope and you have a future. Speak to your father this morning. Thank him for the blood. Thank him for Jesus. And ask him to help you stay connected. Help me stay connected. Help me understand that you are myself. Help me feel you. I need to feel you, Holy Ghost. I need to see you. I need to see you in my, in my situation. I need a manifestation of you today. As we celebrate your blood, let me understand and feel that you are God. Help me abide in you. Are you praying this morning? Speak to your father. 
Help me, Holy Ghost, to stay connected. We cannot do life without you. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you, Holy Ghost, as our life source. You are our life source. You are our life. You are the strength of our life. We cannot do this life without you. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do. Help me see you. Help me understand you. Help me follow you. Help me love you, Lord. Raise your hands to God this morning. Help us, Jesus, to love you, Lord. Help us, Jesus, to know you, Lord. We want to see you, Jesus. We welcome the Holy Ghost into this place. We have come to meet with him and him alone. And he will be manifest in this auditorium. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty and its worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy me. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, nothing in this world can satisfy me. 
me share something with you. My inheritance is the blood of Jesus. What my parents left for me is the blood of Jesus. That is my inheritance. That is what I know. That is what is standing for me. That is what is fighting for me. That is what is speaking for me. All we have is the blood. All we have is the blood. All we would ever need is the blood. The blood speaks of greater things. What is it that you are, are, are fighting against this morning? What is making you afraid? Jesus, The blood still has miraculous power. The blood still speaks. When they call your name, the blood will answer. What is that impossibility? What are you, O Great Mountain, before the river bell? You shall become a play. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Oh, we plead the blood of Jesus. Come, We plead the blood of Jesus.
worship you. We thank you that you came to die. But more importantly, on the third day, you rose again, conquering death, hell, and the grave. And because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you live, all fear is gone. Because we know who holds We are thankful for the gift of you, for the price that you paid, and that you are alive here today. Father, as we go into a time of your word, we thank you, O oh God, that the entrance of your word bringeth light. To illuminate every dark place and every path in our lives that needs your light. We thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you, O oh God that even now all things are working together for our good. Father, I submit myself as a humble vessel, clay in the hands of the potter, to speak through me, O oh God. Say only what you would have me say. I ask you, O oh God, that even now I decrease and you alone increase. I thank you, O oh God, that now you are making my mouth like that of the pen of a ready writer to inscribe on the hearts and minds of those who are willing to receive. I thank you that your word will fall on good soil and take root and bring about a harvest that no one can stop or impede. We come against the devil and his minions who will try to steal, stop, or take the word. And we command it to go. Command them to flee. In the name of Jesus. Take all the glory, God. Take all the honor. Adoration and thanksgiving be unto you. In Jesus' name. If you believe it, say amen. 
If you receive it, shout amen. amen. If you know that God is indeed good, give God a shout of hallelujah. Amen. amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Look at your neighbor say, Happy Resurrection Sunday. Find somebody and say, Happy Resurrection Sunday. Aren't we so thankful that Jesus Christ is alive today? Oh, come on, we could do better than that. Aren't you thankful? You know, I, I, I hear, I hear in my spirit, he's alive, amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive forever. He's alive. Get us started, we'll be here till two. <laughs> you may be seated. Appreciate the, um, the, the Grace Levites, appreciate ASP. Thank you, ma'am. Um, it's good to be back in church. It's good to, it's good to be here. Can we please appreciate Pastor Bissow? She did an amazing job last Sunday. Can we celebrate Pastor Tolu, ASP, for Thursday? You know? Wait, is it, what's the, is this, is that this, what's the noise? Can you people hear, is this this? What, what, what's, what's the issue? Sorry, excuse me, sorry. What's the issue? It can never be. Yeah, come, come, so. Bro, uh, you people can't make me use hand mic today. <laughs> Sorry, I'm coming. Please, somebody come, help me. Because to do hand mic, wow. Please. Ah, uh, look, he's coming. Let him come. Wait, wait, wait. See, you see. Let me tell you what just happened now. You see everything that happens. The Lord speaks to me in some ways. You see how I called for one and three came. Even it, for somebody this month you're entering into. You will call for one and a thousand will answer. Oh, hear me. I'm not trying to, to talk you happy or make you excited. You shall be known as the one God has helped. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated. I feel like I'm, someone has punished me right now. So this is what you people go through. It is well. All right. Please, you people, hurry up with this mic, sir. Because we must use it. Amen? So... So, so, I was going to announce, do they have the theme yet? Oh, am I going to wait? Wait, they do? Yes? Yes. Okay, we're entering into a new month. Yes. And I was asking, I was asking the Lord what the theme for the month would be. Um, and like ASB has said, the last couple of days have been a blur. By the way, you have to come for Easter production. It's going to be fantastic. Amen. Like as we mentioned, we have two shows. One at four and one at seven. So that way, we don't have to worry about overflow. You can come if you want to do the four o'clock, you want to do the seven o'clock, and the seven doesn't run, it will be done before 8.30. Amen. So... If you want to schedule it, you want to come at 4 or you want to chill, relax, come at 7. Either way, it will be just as good. Amen? But it's been a, 
quite hectic couple of days, to say the least. Like ASB said, man, we have walked. So, night vigils back to back. Yes, you can appreciate us. I appreciate choir, drama, instrumentalist, ASP, everybody, sound. It takes a lot, instrumentalist. It takes a lot, camera crew. It takes a lot to put on a production. Facility, security, everything. Um, so, it's been back to back. I touched down on Thursday, right into night vigil, Friday night vigil, Saturday we were here yesterday, and then, so, <laughs> I was asking the Lord what our theme would be for the month, and I did not get our theme to 3 a.m. this morning. Yes, if you do the math, that means if I was up at 3, what time did I sleep? Exactly. But 3 a.m. this morning, the Lord gave me the theme. So, welcome to April. It is a month of special, supernatural delivery. And our theme is Isaiah 66, 7 to 9. Isaiah 66, 7 to 9. Put it on the screen for me while I, I'm trying to, you know, technology. Can you put it on the screen for me? Isaiah 66, 7 to 9, please. Any time today? <laughs> and he says this, before she was in labor, she gave, before she, Zion was in labor, she gave birth. Before her labor pain came, she gave birth to a, continue. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a land be born in a day? <laughs> or can a nation be brought in a moment? As soon as Zion was in labor, she also brought forth her what? Sons. Now, this is what the Lord is saying. Shall I, imbri kataha, shall I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery? Says the Lord. Or shall I, who gives delivery, shut the womb? In the month of supernatural delivery, Everything that you have been pregnant with, every promise God has put inside of you, every vision, every purpose, every sign, every wonder that God has spoken over your life, every prophetic declaration in this month of supernatural delivery, you shall bring forth. It says, that before the labor pains came, the baby came. For somebody, it might seem like nothing is happening. In It may seem like business as usual. <laughs> nothing on the outside will indicate that you are pregnant with vision. Nothing on your age, situation or circumstance will suggest that you are pregnant with promise. But you may not see any indication. There might not be any birth pangs. It may look like you are the same on the outside. But before the pain, there might be no indication your baby shall come forth. In this month that we are stepping into, Lies will fall for you in pleasant places. In this month that we are stepping into, everything God has spoken, it will not be a natural birth. The Bible says, can a land be born in a day? Can a nation? This child was not just an ordinary one. What would take years? In an instant, for somebody under the sound of my voice, 
what will take a lifetime for some for somebody here in the month of supernatural delivery you are bringing forth in the name of Jesus every promise every vision every prophecy it will not be by your own knowing or your own wisdom or your own ability it is not the race is not to the swift but in this month God says will I bring delivery to you and shut up your womb I have not brought you this far to leave you now I have not failed before I'm not about to start today so we walk into this month with expectation your supernatural delivery is here your supernatural delivery is here. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. High five somebody, say welcome to our month of supernatural delivery. Amen, amen, you may be seated. Oh, we didn't welcome people to church, we just entered. Look at the neighbor, say welcome to church. Let's celebrate our online community, our online family. Let's welcome them. Look at your neighbor, tell them you're looking good. Uh-huh, find somebody else, tell them you're smelling good. Tell them, uh-uh, you tried this Resurrection Sunday. You came ready. Now say neighbor. 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 If you knew who I was, if you knew the things God was doing in my life, if you knew how bright my future was, oh sorry, is ahead, not was, the latter shall be better than the former. Do yourself a favor. While you have the chance, collect my number now. Collect my autograph now. Take selfie with me now. Take me to lunch now. Rub my elbow now. If you believe it, shout amen. Come on, somebody, give God a shout of praise. Amen. Uh, have you been able to fix my mic? Almost. Please increase this, um, this strange thing in my hand. So, today is Resurrection Sunday. And the last time we had, um, should I say spoken? The last time, last two Sundays, um, I preached on the cost of mercy. And we talked about the price that Jesus paid. The ultimate price. Lamb laid, he was like the lamb led to the slaughter. He did not contest it. He willingly submitted his life, laid it down, and paid the ultimate price for you and for me. And if we are telling the story of salvation, first that we have a God who would come to die for his creation or his subjects or his followers is quite unique to the Christian faith. Because what you will find in most other religions is where the followers have to die to appease their deity. They must offer sacrifices and most times even themselves. But the Christian faith is unique where our God came to die. Now, that in itself is quite unusual that Jesus would come to die. And if it stopped there, you know, it's a beautiful, it's, it's a unique idea. 
it already sets the Christian faith apart. But when you look at all other religions and other faiths, their central figures, which there are many different central figures of different faiths, they came. They lived their lives in such a way where each other faiths will say, this is a way you should be modeled after. You know, good people on earth did things. But everyone born of a woman died. And that's where the story ends. They came, they lived, and they died. Now, what we believe and what we know is that Jesus not only came and died, but he took it a step further. He resurrected. What separates us the cornerstone of a foundation, the complete story, half of the story is that he came to die. The complete story is that not only did he die, but he what? He resurrected. And you see, this word resurrection is a big debatable word or concept or ideology because you will find in other faiths that people, some other faiths believe in Life after death. Some people believe you take on different forms. Some people believe that based on how you lived your life, you can be, you know, when you come back reincarnated as a dog, a, a dove, you know, depending on how you lived your life. Some people, you become other people. But some people believe that once you die, that's it. We live in the here and now and that's it. So resurrection is debatable. And this concept or ideology of resurrection it's not something that is just being debated today. It's been debated for as far as we know it, even going back into Jesus' time. Is there such thing as a resurrection? Can somebody in flesh die and resurrect? And this conversation splits the, the church of the Jews or, or the, the, the temple or the synagogue back in the day or the scribes the two sets of thoughts. You had the Pharisees and you had the Sadducees. The Pharisees believed in resurrection. The Sadducees did not. And this was a huge topic of conversation. Is there such a thing as resurrection? Matthew 20, 22. I want us to start there. Because there was a heated conversation happening. And they go to Jesus... And they want to take, get his take on it. Matthew 22. Let's go to 29. And it starts by saying a bit of context. And because of my time, I want to read it. It says that the Sadducees did not believe in resurrection. And there was a whole story about what if a man has a wife. He marries her and then dies. And then his brother marries and dies and marries. Seven brothers marry and die. If there's a resurrection, whose wife will it be? That's a valid question. As we have all ma married at some point in time. So if there's a resurrection, Jesus, since you say there is, answer, whose wife will it be? Look at Jesus' reply. Put 29. Matthew 22, not 20. Matthew 22. Matthew 22, verse 29. You have to work with me. Okay. But Jesus replied to them, what did he say? You are all wrong because you know neither scripture which teach the resurrection nor the power of God for he is able to do what? That's a, that's a, that's a bold statement. Continue on. For in the resurrection... Neither do men marry nor are given in marriage. But they are like what? 
angels in heaven who do not marry nor produce children. Continue on. But as to the resurrection of the dead, he says, because this is what you're really after. You have brought this story, but this is what you're after, resurrection. But as to the resurrection of the dead, have you not read in scripture what God said to you, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Jesus says to them, he is not the God of who? But of the... So he says, Let, let's settle this conversation about resurrection. Is there such thing as a resurrection? Yes. Why? Because God says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am not the God of dead people. I will not refer to them as in the present. That means that they are alive because I am the God of the living. So to answer your question, is there such thing as resurrection? The answer is yes. Let's start there. Now, as we continue, Jesus made some audacious statements. The audacity of God to make certain statements. And that was one of the problem that the Jews had with him because he made some statements that as far as they were concerned were heretical. How can you say that? John 2, 19 to 22. Put that on the screen. John 2, 19 to 22. Jesus is having a conversation. <laughs> and he has gone into the temple and he has scattered everything. He said, you have turned my father's house into a house of thieves. I cannot stand for it. And then they were challenging him and saying, by which authority do you do these things? Look at 19. Jesus answered them. What did he say? Destroy this temple. And in how many days? And in how many days? And in three days, I will what? <laughs> Continue on. Raise it up. Then the Jews replied in anger. It took 46 years to build this temple. And you will raise it up in three days. Sir, are you all right? Sir, are you mad? Are you delusional? How can you say? Do you know what it took to build our temple? That represents... The presence of God. This is where God resides. And you're telling him, 46 years. And you say, you build it in three days. Ah, they were angry. But what does the Bible say? He was speaking of the temple, which was what? So when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered. He was talking about the temple. And this temple was his body. And he was telling them, even before the crucifixion would come, this is what is going to happen. This temple, you will try to destroy it. But in three days, I, notice what he said, destroy this temple. Take it back. Destroy this temple. And in three days, who will raise it up? He says, I, me, myself, will raise it up. Now, if he was talking about his body and himself, he's already telling you that he has the power and the ability to give life. Not that my father will raise it up. He says, I will raise it up. 